According to a study, it's estimated that Malaysia ranks 8th in the world for plastic waste producing, nearly 1 million tonne due to poor plastic waste management. Also, cleaning costs are a heavy burden on the government, as the country produces 33 million tonnes of garbage and only 24% of the garbage is recycled and reused, most of which is paper. Therefore, how to turn the garbage into renewable resources has been a key issue for the Malaysian government in recent years. Full report as we learn more. A day in a quiet small community starts with garbage collection. Malaysian people generally do not sort garbage classification. In this garbage bag that we are randomly sampling, there are things like aluminium foil bag, paper bags, kitchen waste, all thrown together, turning these reusable resources into garbage. Look at the people's behavior uh, in, the, in this state or in the whole country, you know. People really do not uh, really have the sensitivity when it comes to whether it is their own responsibility to do the recycle, just to preserve the environment, to, uh, to, to prevent that the whole waste be dumped at the landfill. Most of the garbage collectors are migrant workers and their salaries are not high. Recyclables that can be sold have become an alternative income channel for them. If they find a resource that can be sold, they will sort it first, like iron, plastic, paper. They will put it aside and sell it. The sought-after recyclables expose the sanitation team members to the risk of being robbed. When these trucks go to this village area, very far area, normally there, there is a problem there. You know, our truck will be stopped by gangster or robbery, robbery that ask for money, you know. That's why for the truck which are operating on the, we call it a uh, risky zone. KDEB is both a public and private company. It is responsible for collecting garbage in the entire Selangor state. The cost of cleaning and transportation includes manpower and transportation. One family only subsidizes two U.S. dollars, which is seven ringgits, compared with a garbage removal company in Kuala Lumpur that subsidizes four U.S. dollars, which is double, as they also learn how to divide the load between two vehicles to carry garbage and recyclables. Every local government has an average annual income of 30%, and more than 30% is used for garbage disposal. So this is the heaviest burden for the local government. In this area, 3,000 tons of garbage are dumped every day. When the garbage truck dumps the garbage, it will be buried with a layer of soil. When the pile reaches 27 meters high, it will be covered and a new space for landfill must be found. There's a sour smell in the air. This is the final destination for domestic garbage made by the people. There are eight landfill sites in Selangor, and this site in Juram is one of the larger ones that can accommodate nearly half of Selangor's waste. It will last maybe like the most seven years. One is filled up seven years, what are you going to do? You have to have another 100, 250 acres of land just to be on standby for KDB to send the waste. So this is not the way forward, not the sustainable thing to do. To extend the life of the burial site, you must consider water quality, air pollution, land erosion and other issues. The legal treatment method should be a layer of soil and a layer of garbage, plus a biogas exhaust pipe. And at the bottom, there's also an impermeable layer. When planning for this final treatment, wastewater is also a challenge. In Malaysia, there are 130 burial sites and 80% of them are not done in a safe way. For example, if we spend 10 to 12 US dollars per metric ton in Malaysia, we can discard it to the landfill site. If the incinerator is used, its price may rise to 20 to 30 US dollars. Recycling or burying in landfill will never keep up with the speed of manufacturing.
丢垃圾桶就好了。啊，对呀、啊。那你如果这个丢垃圾桶晚上是有人来收啊？有有有有，你看，我们全部放那边，有垃啊那些垃圾车来倒。哦，是垃圾车会收啊？啊，对对。那问题是垃圾车收了去哪？垃圾场啊。Perhaps what needs to be considered is that reducing trash at the source, which is the ultimate solution. There used to be a garbage mountain component industrial district. After the operation ceased more than 10 years ago, at the beginning of 2020, construction vehicles once again broke the tranquility of the area by building new roads. On one side, six years ago, it was transformed into a new development zone with many residents and businesses. This is actually very close to Kuala Lumpur. It's less than 10 kilometers away, so this land is also very valuable. The government has given this land to private individuals for development purposes. As soon as the site was excavated, garbage appeared such as iron and aluminum cans and tires. Much of this had not completed its decomposition process and it was a shocking scene to many. In fact, there are still some poisonous gas in the bureau site that will emerge. I think there is still a big impact on health, but the pace of development cannot be stopped. When you reach this place, you still need development. This is all caused by mankind. It will be eventually borne by mankind. One day, these former landfill sites will become residential areas, leaving us with little choice but to live on top of garbage, which will be worrying to many people in their heart.